Good morning, everybody, and welcome back to another weekly recap. In the weekly recap, I like to go over any news related to the old school RuneScape community this week. Now, this week we had one really big piece of news, and that is the release date for the Darkmire update, uh, which, just to cut to the chase, is June 4th. On top of that, we now have a new poll blog for poll number 71. Now, today we're not actually going to get a content update, and apparently that's to do with uh, the fact that it's a banking holiday in England, I guess. As always, I'll be doing a quick recap of the weekly Q&A and anything else I think is interesting. Anyway guys, hope you enjoy and let's get started. Now I'm going to start by going over content poll number 71 because it is by far the most game focused update of this week. Now in poll 70, they made some changes to the gauntlet, but they wanted to make more changes in poll number 71. And that is what this poll blog heavily focuses on, the gauntlet. Now first appear, they'd like to reduce some of the frustration of finding resources in early rooms by reducing the amount of randomization. Uh, so the first poll question is, should the inner square rooms in the gauntlet be predetermined to always contain the same basic resources? This will not apply to the corrupted gauntlet mode. So question number one would make the gauntlet a little bit more streamlined. Okay, next appears, should the demi bosses be spawned in a set position on the outer edge of the gauntlet to make them easier to find? They will only spawn in six of the 12 highlighted areas. Uh, there's also going to be a small buff on the Crystal Staff, which is a gauntlet-only item. They're going to buff the max hit of the Crystal Staff in the gauntlet to be equivalent to the Crystal Bow and Halberd. Now next appear, they want to tackle Armor Crafting. Now currently, to get Tier 3 Armor, you need a total of 54 resources to be gathered, which is a lot of time spent doing busy work when you could be challenging the Hunliff. Now the proposal is that they would cut down the number of resources needed to upgrade each armor piece. Now with the proposed change, it would reduce the total resource cost to 39, uh, which is reducing it by 15 resources. Next up here, they'd like to offer two more convenient ways to use vials and potions in the gauntlet. Uh, first up here, they want to enable the barbarian smashing technique, uh, which will automatically destroy vials for you. Uh, secondly, we're aware that you can achieve one tick of vial filling and food cooking while in the gauntlet by spam clicking. Now as it's pretty easy to do that, they want to just make that the default speed just to reduce the strain on your wrists a bit. I'm all for that. <laughs> and the final change to the gauntlet is to do with the actual crystalline Hunleff itself. Right now the Hunleff fights in a very predictable pattern, 4 range attacks followed by 4 magic attacks. We're not planning on changing this, but they want to add a better method to predict the next attack beyond just counting. Uh, so now there's going to be a new animation for the ranged and magic attack, uh, which I think is always a good idea, having visual indicators is nice, and it honestly just makes the boss fight visually better. Okay, so finally, we are going to get some major changes to the Grotesque Guardian. Uh, this has been a boss that I always loved. It kind of has a special place in my heart, mainly because it actually dropped something good for me for once. Uh, but realistically, it's not very good to do. It's debatably even worth doing that over regular gargoyles. But it's such a cool boss fight, and it's a shame it's not really even good for mid-level players. Okay, so one big change that they are not going to go through with, at least not immediately, is there was a poll question when this was released to make Granite Dust tradable. Now this is something that a lot of people wanted when the Grotesque Guardian was originally released. Currently Granite Dust is something not a lot of people use because not many people kill the boss. And as it's untradable, it doesn't really add to the total boss's value. Now personally, I agree that making the dust tradable would be good to improve the GP per hour. However, the big issue is that Granite Dust increases the damage on your cannon, which totally changes a ton of things for Slayer and the meta around it. So they mention here that as you know, we don't like to make sudden changes without consulting our players, but in this instance we realize that the impact tradable Granite Dust could have on Slayer might be too large. We believe that the better option is to wait and see how the changes to the Grotesque Guardian play out. We already know that if the wait time during the fights are reduced, we'll see an uptick in the amount of granite dust in the games simply because more people are playing and enjoying the fight. If we made it tradable, we may find that too much granite dust is entering the game, being used to craft granite cannonballs and making Slayer tasks much faster than we'd like. We'd very much like to buff the Guardians, but not to the point where we'd significantly altering one of the most popular activities in the game. Yeah, it'd really come down to how expensive the granite dust was. I think maybe if you reduced the quantities that it dropped in granite dust and just made it kind of a more expensive niche item for cannonballs, then maybe it could be okay. People wouldn't probably cannon every task if it was costing them millions of GP. But anyway, they are going to be going through with some other changes. First appears, should we remove the lighting transition when Dawn flies away during the Grotesque Guardian fight? This will allow dust to become attackable as soon as Dawn flies away. Uh, also, should we make the Grotesque Guardians reach their places faster during the transition so they can be attacked sooner? 
Should we reduce the leftover lightning phase transition time? And also should we allow reduced damage to pass through when the phase changes during the Grotesque Guardian fight? So they're all just changes to make the fight more streamlined, quicker, more importantly. Because for some reason the Grotesque Guardian, even as a mid-level boss, takes like 3 to 5 minutes. Which is longer than Zalra, it's longer than Vorkath, it's longer than Hydra, like it's kinda ridiculous. So anyway, I'm really happy those changes are finally coming through. Now another big focus point of poll number 71 is the Chambers of Zarek. Now Raids 1 is going to be receiving quite a few different changes. Now the first one here is to the Vanguard Room, where they'd like to remove the magic defense and increase the melee defense on the melee vanguard, as it doesn't really match up with the established combat triangle. Uh, they're also going to be increasing the hit points on vanguards, but making them easier to hit. They don't anticipate that this would make the room any less challenging, just less annoying. Uh, next up here, they'd like to make the chance of getting a grub from a chest in the chambers of Zarek based on thieving levels. Yeah, sure, why not? Now I'm skipping over some of the minor things here, but uh, one of the more important ones, they're going to be adding a fourth storage unit to the chambers of Zarek. This one could be built at level 99 construction and would have a personal capacity of 99 and a shared capacity of 1500. Now another really interesting one here is they would like to add Twisted Ornament Kits offered in the Twisted League Reward Blog as a potential drop from the Chambers of Zarek Challenge Mode. As similar to Infinity Robe Ornament Kits, the Twisted Robe Ornament Kit could be attached to any piece of the Ancestral Robe set and will make that robe piece untradeable. It will be an additional drop on the loot table similar to how dust is obtained. Uh, now one kind of interesting consideration here with um, ornament kits is the fact that it does make the item untradeable, which means it's kept on death in most circumstances if you're not in the wilderness. Now I know deaths are already pretty damn safe, but at one point is everything going to be untradeable and none of it drops? I don't know, definitely a consideration for me. Also, what infinity robe ornament kits are they talking about? <laughs> Okay, another change to Slayer, they'd like to add in superior versions of Turoth. Honestly, I think there should probably be just a superior for every Slayer monster at this point. I don't really see why not. Okay, so next up they're going to be changing a very iconic thing about Lumbridge. They're going to be adding in an anvil there. Now we're proposing the addition of a beginner's anvil, which can only smith bronze items to forge in Lumbridge. This will allow new players to properly equip themselves before exploring the wider world. I think if they just put the anvil a reasonable distance away that's not an issue and it might just be kind of confusing having one anvil that you can only smith bronze on. I don't really know why that needs to be a thing. <laughs> okay next up here they'd like to make a small quality of life change to the equipment window. Currently there's not enough room to display the set effect that you're getting for things like uh, graceful or inquisitors. Now to work around the classic interface we'd like to add a panel that is hidden and less opened. This panel will display the equipment stats and list any active set effects. You can equip or unequip items while this panel is open and it'll update accordingly. So it looks like the thieving pet Rocky is going to get a recolor. If this question passes you'll be able to feed Rocky berries to change its species. Red berries will transform it into a red panda, poison ivy berries will turn it into a tanuki, and white berries will return it to its original state. I think it's kind of cool that you don't need to grind out a massive reward just to recolor it. You can just feed him some berries. Okay, so next up here we have a player suggestion. I remember reading this on Reddit. Now if this question passes, you could unlock new transmogs for your monkey backpack at 100, 250, 500, 1000, 1500, and 2000 laps of the Apatol agility course. You'd then be able to choose your monkey's appearance from a right-click menu. Uh, so next up here, they'd like to offer a new way to obtain soft clay packs and bags full of gems. You'd now be able to buy soft clay packs from the Mining Guild Mineral Exchange for 10 unidentified minerals. And you can also buy bags full of gems for 20 unidentified minerals. And finally here they're making a proposed buff to a few wilderness monsters. In poll number 70 they expanded Crystallia's task list to include a few different monsters but a couple pain points were Black Knights and Blood Velds as there's only a couple spawns in the entire wilderness so they're proposing to increase that substantially with this update. And finally, that is it for poll number 71. A ton of awesome changes. Let me know what you think. And finally here, I just pulled a few questions from this week's Q&A, some of the more interesting ones. Now first up here, how long do you think it will take to see the very first set of Dark Graceful? They think maybe at the end of the first day, most likely though into the second day. Uh, so based on how much RuneScape players play, it seems like maybe at least 16 hours. 
Okay, a really interesting one here is what items would you recommend having equipped and in your inventory when you are completing the Sepulchre? Now, Mod Husky didn't directly answer this, but he did say you'll need to bring in your own supplies, which kind of indicates you'll need food, uh, stamina potions, lockpicks, I don't know, stuff like that. He didn't directly say that, but that would be my guess. Now, Sins of the Father is considered a master level quest. Is there going to be a follow up quest after? Now, there's no plans yet, but they don't imagine this will be the last one. Probably the second to last, though. In my opinion, it would be kind of nice to see a major quest somewhere else. We've had quite a few things in Mortania recently. For Song of the Elves, you added the quest into the quest log a couple weeks before their release. Are you planning on doing that again? Uh, maybe. It is really nice to do it. Uh, might be low priority, but if they get around to doing it, they'll definitely go ahead. And finally here, when is going to be the next Twisted League? We get that question a lot, but apparently there's going to be a lot of information in this month's Gilnor Gazette for the month of May, and it will be the next project after Darkmire. Anyway guys, that is going to be it for this week's weekly recap. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, I always appreciate it. If you leave the video a like, and I'll see you next time.